Hi friends, how are you today? As you know, I love books, I love good stories, and I love sharing them with you. And I had a special request today from my friend Harris, and Harris wanted to hear a book about fire trucks. So Harris, this is one of my favorite stories about fire trucks and what it's like being a firefighter. It's called Big Frank's Fire Truck. And it's written by Leslie McGuire, illustrated by Joe Matthew. So I hope you all like it as much as I do. Let's get started. It's nine o'clock on Monday morning. Big Frank is just getting to work. Big Frank is a firefighter. He works a 24 hour shift. That means he'll be on duty all day and all night long time. This is the firehouse. This is where Big Frank lives, sleeps, and eats while he's at work. Can you imagine sleeping while you're at work? Big Frank checks in and goes over his schedule. At 11 o'clock, he will make a fire inspection at the supermarket. At 2 o'clock, he'll visit the elementary school to talk about fire safety. Big Frank has to be prepared for all kinds of emergencies too. Who knows what will happen during his shift? So here's the office, and the kitchen, and this is the common room where they hang out, the bunk room where they take their naps and rest. And oh, look at the pole. I like that part the best. And then here are the fire truck stalls, three big fire trucks. The fire chief asks Big Frank to fuel up the fire trucks. Big Frank heads for the garage. Big Frank's company has three fire trucks. The hook and ladder is used for aerial rescues. The brush breaker has four wheel drive and can go where there are no roads. Big Frank drives the pumper engine. The pumper holds water, a thousand gallons. Pumper, the brush breaker, and the hook and ladder. Which one's your favorite? I don't know, I kinda like the big ladder, don't you? After he takes care of the engines, Big Frank checks his gear. He wears a helmet to protect his head, a fireproof coat and pants to protect his body, and sturdy boots to protect his feet. He has a wooden wedge for propping open doors and an oxygen pack and a mask in case the fires are very smoky. Big Frank hangs his equipment next to the pumper engine. Now he is ready for anything. Big Frank sits down with his partner, Mike, for a cup of coffee. Just then the fire bell rings. At the same time, the lights in the front of the station start flashing and the computer starts printing. Accident at the intersection of Main Street and Laurel Road. Car on fire. Mike, Janet, and Gary jump into the pumper with Big Frank. Big Frank turns on the siren and heads out of the station. Woo! Woo! Can you make a siren sound? The fire truck roars down Main Street with the siren going full blast. Cars pull over when they hear the noise and a policeman waves the big engine right through a red light. The firefighters arrive on the scene of the accident in less than four minutes. The first thing that Big Frank does is check to see if anyone is hurt. He is glad he's had his paramedic training. One lady has a bad cut on her head. Big Frank bandages the cut and Mike radios for an ambulance. Meanwhile, Gary and Janet spray the burning car with a special foam made for gasoline fires. The flames go out and a tow truck comes to haul the wrecked car away. Big Frank returns to the station with the others and fills out his report. He looks at his watch. It's nearly 11 o'clock. He drives over to the quick shop to make his inspection. 
Big Frank inspects the store's sprinkler system to make sure it's working properly. He checks the emergency doors to see if they'll open in case of a fire. He also runs a test on the alarm system. The supermarket has a smoke alarm that rings right in the fire station. Everything looks okay. Back at the firehouse, Big Frank eats lunch with the other firefighters. Then he takes a short nap in his bunk. At two o'clock, Big Frank and Mike drive the pumper engine over to Nice View Elementary School. Big Frank and Mike talk to the second grade class about fire safety. Mike tells them that smoke detectors are very important. He shows them how to check their smoke detectors at home. Do you know how to do that? I want to check. Big Frank teaches the class what to do in case of a house fire. He tells them to stay low so they won't breathe too much smoke. Then he shows them how to stop, drop, and roll. That's fun to practice. On the way back to the station, a call comes in over the radio. Brush fire at Dairy Hill. <gasps> Big Frank turns the pumper around and heads for Dairy Hill. He and Mike will meet the rest of the company there. Big Frank is worried. There hasn't been any rain for a long time and the wind is blowing. This could be a bad fire. Big Frank and Mike reach the fire a little after four o'clock. They go right to work. They spray water around the edges of the blaze to keep it from spreading. The wind blows and sparks fly through the air. When the rest of the company arrives, the fire chief tells Janet and Gary to hose down the roofs of the nearby houses. That will help keep the sparks from setting the houses on fire. At nightfall, the wind picks up speed. Suddenly, the fire goes out of control and races towards the forest. The fire is too big for one company to handle alone. Big Frank radios for help. Two more companies are on their way. Big Frank knows all the firefighters and the other companies. He has worked with them many times. Together, they make a good team. By midnight, they have saved the nearby houses from catching fire. They have headed off the blaze to the north, south, and east, but the fire is still spreading west through the trees. Even the brush breakers can't keep up. Remember, those are the ones that don't need a road, the four-wheel drives. Big Frank calls in a squad of special firefighting helicopters. Soon they are whirling overhead. The firefighters battle the blaze from the ground. The helicopters drop chemicals from the air. Finally, after 14 hours, the fire begins to die out. The worst is over. Big Frank is tired. No wonder it is nearly six o'clock in the morning. As soon as the next shift of firefighters arrive, Big Frank and his company head back to the firehouse. Back at the station, Big Frank helps wash down the trucks. They are sooty from the fire. Big Frank is dirty too. He has ashes all over him, even in his hair. Big Frank jumps in the shower. Then he puts on clean clothes and eats a big breakfast. It's nine o'clock on Tuesday morning. Big Frank's shift is over. Big Frank waves goodbye to the other firefighters. He can't wait to go home. He can't wait to hug Amber and little Frank. Big Frank will have two days off to spend with his family. Then he'll start another shift fighting fires and helping everyone's family stay safe and sound. Oh, and that is the story, Big Frank's Fire Truck. I hope you all liked it as much as I do. Harris, thank you so much for the recommendation. I think this was a good one, don't you? Take care, friends. Hope to see you soon. Bye now.